Hello and welcome to this Technical Corner. I'm with Ken Baldwin from Open Mind Technologies UK. And today, um, this is a, a subject that we've been covering a lot recently, and it's how can you get the most out of your existing machine tool? Ken, um, there's a lot of, uh, at the moment, let's say lack of confidence in the market. Sometimes people worrying about investing in new machines, and sometimes more pertinently, people thinking they're not getting as much out of their machine as they could. Um, this is a, a real life scenario for you guys that you live every day. Um, how can Hypermill software help people get more out of their machine tool? Well, with with Hypermill, you know, you can you can see everything that you're doing. So if you're already programming at the machine conversationally and you think maybe you're, you're already on the limit of what you can achieve, really you should be looking at what a CAM system, you know, what Hypermill can do for you. Okay, so let's, let's, take, let's, let's look at some real life working examples because this is what people might, may identify with. Let's say I had, um, let's, let's talk about basics, a basic three axis machining center, for example. And I'm thinking to myself, I need to buy another spindle, I need another one. Um, but actually, have I got as much out of this one as I can get yet? Is that a scenario that happens a lot? And if so, what are the areas that you can make improvements to that machine? It definitely is. So if you, you know, if your if your machine is at capacity and you're looking at extra spindles, you should you should really be looking at are you actually getting the most out of that machine that you possibly can? And I can I can assure you if you, you know if you're not using you know the strategies that we got in Hypermill, we can always give it give it a bit more. So we could reduce the cycle time to get more capacity out of that machine before you start looking at extra spindles because it might be you buy an extra spindle and you only need it 20 30% of the time which it takes, you know, of course, there's the cost, there's the floor space, and you need someone to run it. Okay, I, I want to I use this, um, let's talk about this four basic machines. So a basic turning center, a two axis lathe, a three axis machining center. Let's talk about some of the strategies that will help. Let's talk about roughing, for example. How, how can you maybe push a machine more to its limits in that area? So roughing in hypermill is quite a large subject. It's not just, we just do roughing in one way, because we, what we it's, it's very flexible that you can pick the appropriate strategy depending on the application and the material. So if you take something like steel, for example, so, so some, something quite hard material that's tough, so that's where you want to utilize what we call um, hypermill max machining roughing, which is a trichoidal style toolpath. So what this is doing, it's, it's taking full depth of cut using the full flute of your tool rather than that first two, three mil. Um, we're using a reduced step over, maybe 20, 30%. But what we're, the real key thing is we're adapting the feed rate to keep the material removal rate constant. So you can then, you know, because it's adapting depending on the cutter loading, you know, which you, you can then keep it constant. You're not having to, you know, if you're not using jacoidal, you're probably running or you will be running much lower feeds and speeds than you could run in certain areas because you want to make sure that the tool survives those area, those stress points on a toolpath. Is my machine, if it's slightly older, is it capable of keeping up with the code that you're throwing at it. You know, it, you talk about trichoidal milling, we'll put that over the over the screen now. It's quite some metal removal. It is, yeah, there is there is a lot more code. So the only limitation really could be the machine memory. So you know, obviously we're gonna be putting a lot more, you know, a lot more lines uh, so that, that will need more memory on the machine um, than maybe, which which can be an issue on old, older machines. But if that, if memory is an, is an issue, then yeah, absolutely, you could get a lot more out of it. Could you feed the code directly in if memory was? An there issue? are methods of drip feeding. Um, you know, so there there is bits of software where you know just a, a PC can just uh, constantly uh, you know load that into the memory. Um, what about if it, again I use the, the term, it was an older machine and I was struggling to achieve the surface finishes that I wanted. Is there areas of your software that can maybe improve that as well then? Surface finish, definitely. So Hypermill is known um, for giving a very high quality uh, you know, surface finish. You know, the, the background of Hypermill is three axis mold and die. And you, know, you can't win a mold and die without a good surface finish. But what some a new area we we do now have a new new mode which we call high precision uh, machining. So this is where you can now get a, get a far even better surface finish. So if you're looking at optical molds, something where you know, and you don't you know, you, people are maybe spending time polishing their molds with high precision. You can reduce you know either eliminate that polishing or now make it absolutely minimal. And even if you look at your machine and you think it's not going to be capable of delivering that surface finish, we, what we're saying is the software can really take it to the next level. Exactly, it's, it's all about, you know, a machine at the end of the day, it does what it's told. It's just executing instructions, whether they're good or bad. 
So if you if it has the very best instructions, then you really are getting the limit, you know, pushing that machine to the limit. And if, if tolerance is another one, what about if you were if you were machining a component and you weren't able to get quite down to the tolerances you needed because the machine was slightly older or maybe less capable? Can your software improve the final part as well in terms of its its um, dimensions? We we could only hit the accuracy of that particular machine. Um, so obviously, if the machine is if its repeatability isn't good enough for what you're doing, we can't improve on that. But I think I really do believe that there's so many machines out there that are just not you know, hitting you know, the, the limit of what it's capable of. And, and is it true then that, what about tool life? Because some older machines um, and, and less sophisticated machines might wear tools quicker because of the vibrations and things like that. Will the software work out the best strategy in order to get the best tool life as well? Yeah, I mean, going back to trachoidal uh, tool paths, because you're varying you know, you're, or you're adapting the feed rate to keep the loading constant, um, that is going to give you better tool life as well. So, you know, you go into shops and you hear this grunting every so often, and that's when the tool's going into corners. Um, you know, and that that's those high areas of loading. That's that's the stress points. With a trachoidal tool path, you don't hear that. You know, when you listen, when you hear it cutting the machine, it just sounds nice. Let's talk about real life examples. I mean, it's great illustrating all this stuff, but give us an example of someone where you've gone into and they've said, you know demonstrate this to me. I've got this machine and actually I want to get more out of it before I buy another one. Yeah, we had a, an example a few years ago where it was a, it was a mill, turn, mill turn machine and it was all program conversation on the control. They were very happy with the output, but they were looking to put more capacity. You know, the order, you know, the order quantity was going up and the, you know, they, the, the immediate thing they thought of was, well, I, I will buy a second machine. But when we spoke to them, we actually demonstrated, you know, with Hypermill, because we can visualize a lot more and we know exactly what the stock condition is, we can eliminate, you know, a bit of fresh air cut in here and it, it all adds up over time. We were then able to get the, the capacity of component through that one machine and they didn't need to go out and buy that second machine yet. So if you're watching this, um, if you're watching this technical corner and you're a small machine shop and you have maybe two, three machines uh, in a limited floor space, is that, is that a target for you? Is that someone that you could be talking to and saying, look, you know, before you start looking at buying bigger facilities, more spindles, let's just come in and check out whether you're getting the best out of what you've got. Definitely, definitely. You know, it's space is often at a premium. Um, you know, it costs money. Often, you know, and it, Certain, certain problems, some I, I know our customers have experienced, is also they want to buy a machine, they've got the space for it, but they haven't got the power. So they have to pay a lot of money to the electricity board to upgrade the power as well. So really it's, you know, look at get maximizing what you've got before you start adding spindles. And this can apply, just to reiterate, to very, very basic machines, three axis vertical machine and centers, two axis lathes. I mean, the final point I would mention is, is your max machining high performance turning. Mm -hmm. I've seen this illustrated, uh, you know, a week or so ago on the Vulcan machine from ETG, turning backwards and forwards, almost halving cycle times immediately. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And, and people aren't even, you know, people often don't think that that is a quick way, a quick win. Yeah, it is, and it, it's. I really, I, I would, say, I would always say to people, if you don't believe it, put us to the test. You know, and we're quite happy to to demonstrate to prove prove that this technology works uh, and what the savings are. Hence, the reason Open Mind seems to be growing so quickly at the moment. Um, get more out of your machine tools. That's been this technical corner with Ken Baldwin from Open Mind.